Hey everybody, this is Dr. Adeyemi, and I wanted to take just a few moments to introduce you to something called Gentile's Multidimensional Taxonomy. Now, this taxonomy is something that we can utilize to help us classify various motor skills. In fact, this is something that you'll oftentimes see included in a task analysis. And the purpose of a task analysis is to help us better understand the demands of a skill. And if we can better understand the demands of a skill, then we're better off teaching the skill to other people. So this is why this taxonomy is both important and very helpful. Now, as we dig into the components of this taxonomy, there are four things that I'd like you to keep in mind. Um, but before we get to those four things, as we think about a skill, or as we go to classify a skill, I want you to think about that skill as if it's actually taking place live in front of you. Now, when we go to classify that skill, we can classify it based on these four terms that you see on the screen here. We can classify it based on things that we call regulatory conditions. And what this refers to are objects, individuals, or things about the environment that can either remain fixed or these things can be variable, meaning they may change. With intertrial variability, this is essentially referring to whether or not things change from one attempt to the next. So here's how we can define it or ask the question. Is there a variation in the skill in a second attempt compared to the first attempt? If there's no variation between maybe the first try in doing something and the second, we would then say that intertrial variability is absent. If there is a change between one attempt and one that comes right after, then we would say intertrial variability is present. The third thing that we need to consider is body orientation. And body orientation would have us to ask the question, does the skill require the performer to move from one location to the next while they're performing? And for that, we can just simply answer with a yes or a no. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is that Moving from one location to the next means you have to physically go somewhere. It doesn't mean that your body can remain stable and other parts of your body are moving. You would physically have to move somewhere for this to be a yes response. The fourth term that I'd like us to take a look at here is manipulation. With manipulation, we're asking ourselves the question Does the motor skill require or are there requirements for the performer to manipulate an object or face an opponent, or we can add this in, work with a partner? So again, if they have to work with some kind of object or some kind of tool, or if they're facing an opponent, or if they have a partner that they have to work with, then we would say that yes, manipulation is required, or we could of course say no, that no manipulation is required. So if you've got your chart for Gentile's taxonomy, if you would, please pull that out. Let's take a few notes on this just so we can understand how it works specifically. What we're gonna do is start with the question about body stability or body transport. If we would say that the skill we're investigating requires someone to move from point A to point B, of course, that's going to mean that body transport is required. If body transport is not required, of course, that means that the body remains stable. Now, the next thing that we need to consider is, is the individual, while performing the skill or activity, are they manipulating an object? And the way that we talked about that momentarily was, are they working with an object are they facing an opponent or are they working with a partner? And if they are, we're going to use either of the columns that you see highlighted here 
as our classification of that given skill. Now, if the individual is not working with an object, an opponent, or a partner, then we're going to use either the first or third columns here to classify that given skill. Now, the next thing that we need to consider is whether or not the object, individuals, or anything in the environment changes during the performance. So if there's a change during the performance, we would say that things are varied or that the regulatory conditions change. If things remain the same, then we would say that the regulatory conditions remain fixed. So let's think about it this way. For fixed regulatory conditions, we're saying that things remain the same. For varied regulatory conditions, we're saying that things definitely change. Now, if you notice just below this, we've got two terms under both fixed and varied regulatory conditions. We have intertrial variability or no intertrial variability. So here's what we're getting at. We have to ask ourselves, does the attempt that comes after our first attempt, does it remain relatively the same or does it differ? So again, if you're writing, make sure you got these terms written down on your chart because this will help us know how to utilize this chart appropriately. So feel free to pause the video here to help make sure you've got everything listed correctly. So now that you've gotten this jotted down on your sheet, here's what we need to consider. Let's put an example to practice here. Let's imagine that we have someone doing the sit-up, just as this lady is showing here. The top picture shows the starting position, and the bottom picture shows the ending position. So what I'd like you to do is utilize your chart. Ask yourself, does this particular activity require body transport, or does it require that the body remain stable? After you've done that, ask yourself, is this young lady, is she manipulating an object? Is she facing an opponent? Or is she working with a partner? The next thing to consider is, is there an object um, or is there an individual or anything in the environment that would seem to change while she's performing this sit-up? Then, last but not least, ask yourself, if she does a second attempt of this sit-up, is it going to look similar to the first time that she did it? Or is it possible that it could look different? So again, feel free to pause the video here and see if you can correctly identify how this particular activity or movement should be classified. Did you say 1A? If you did, you got it right. So let's talk about it. Here's our chart. Let's go through those questions. We're asking, does the individual have to be moving from one place to the other? And the answer is no. We noticed that the young lady was able to stay in a very stationary position. She did not move from one point to the next. So that gives us an opportunity to cross off all of the boxes under body transport. So now all we have to do is focus on the first two columns towards the left. We know that her body is in a stationary movement. Is she man manipulating an object? Or is there no object manipulation? Well, you're right if you thought about this. She's not manipulating an object, she's not facing an opponent, and she's not working with a partner. So we can cross out all of the options under the second column as well. So, so far so good. We've narrowed it down to one column in particular. And so we know that this particular skill allows the body to remain in a stable position and there's no object manipulation. And so the next thing, so we have to ask ourselves, are the regulatory conditions, the objects, maybe individuals or anything about the environment, are they changing? Or do they remain relatively the same or fixed? 
and the answer here is that they remain fixed. So because they remain fixed, we can cancel out boxes 3a and 4a. So, so far so good. We're down to one or two options here. And the question that we have to ask is for a second attempt of the sit-up, is this going to look relatively the same as the first attempt? Or is it probably going to look different? If you answer that it's probably going to look the same, then you're right. And so we would say that there is no intertrial variability, and therefore our sit-ups would be classified as a 1A skill in Gentile's multidimensional taxonomy. Let's do another one. Let's imagine that we're watching someone live running down the hill just as this young lady is doing. Take a second, pause the video here, see if you can determine how to classify the skill using Gentile's multidimensional taxonomy. Did you say 3C? If you did, then you're correct. So let's talk about it. Again, if we go to our chart, we have to ask ourselves, first, is the individual in a stable or stationary position, or is she going from one place to the next? Hopefully you would say she's going from one place to the next. She's running down a hill. In that case, we can cancel out the first and second columns here because, again, we know that she is moving from one place to the next. Then we have to ask ourselves, is she manipulating an object? Is she facing an opponent? Or is she working with a partner? And the answer to that is no. She's not working with someone. She's not working against someone. She's not manipulating an object. So we know that the classification is going to be in column C. The next thing on our list to do is to ask about the regulatory conditions. Now, again, the regulatory conditions represents things in the environment, maybe objects or individuals. Are they changing or are they stationary? Now, here's where we have to really think a little bit more critically. This young lady is running down a hill. And so, specifically, the environment is changing a little bit. And you might ask, well, what's changing? Well, the answer here would be the steepness of the hill that she's running down. As she continues running down the hill, the hill becomes less steep. And so that is a change within the environment. So because there's that change within the environment, we would say that the regulatory conditions aren't fixed. They are changing or they're varied. And so we're now left with boxes 3C and 4C. And the question that we have to ask here is, is there any intertrial variability or is there no intertrial variability? So if we think about it, if she runs down the hill once and does it again, is the running going to look similar to the first time or is it going to look maybe completely different? Well, in this case, we would say that it's probably going to look relatively the same. People don't usually change their form when they're running. Usually our form is our form. So we could say here that using Gentile's multidimensional taxonomy, that this is a 3C skill. Now, if we compare this to what we just looked at a moment ago with the sit-up, remember our sit-up was a 1A skill, and running down the hill is a 3C skill. Now, something else that we can kind of look at with this is the idea of complexity. And so as we go through our particular boxes from left to right, the skill becomes a little bit more complex. And so we could say for sure that running down a hill is a much more complex skill than performing a sit-up. Let's do another. Let's imagine that we have an individual who is performing a shot put. Now, what I might encourage you to do here before you try to answer this on your sheet 
is to take just a second and look at a video of someone performing a shot put just in case you're not too familiar with how it's performed. So once you're ready, feel free to pause the video here, determine how you would place this on Gentile's multidimensional taxonomy. Did you say 1D? Well, you'd be correct if you did. Let's take a look at it. Again, what we're gonna do is go back to our chart here and we're gonna ask ourselves, does this particular skill require that the body remain stable or is the body being transported from one point to the next? We would say that the body is being transported from one point to the next because there is some slight movement that the performer must do to complete the task. So now that we know body transport is required, we've got to ask ourselves, is there object manipulation or is there no object manipulation? And clearly there is definitely object manipulation. Um, this individual is working with, of course, the shot put. And so even though he's not facing an opponent, and even though he's not working with a partner, definitely there's an object in play here. So we can cancel out this third column that lists no object manipulation. So now we know for sure that our answer is going to be in column D. So from here, we've got to ask ourselves, are the regulatory conditions fixed or are the regulatory conditions variable or varied? And so here's kind of where we have to, again, think a little bit more critically. Uh, for this particular condition or for this particular exercise, we would say that the regulatory conditions remain the same. In other words, there's not really anything in the environment that's changing. There's no one in the environment that this skill is being performed in that's changing. Uh, the object isn't changing. So those things remain relatively the same. So they're fixed. And so we're going to use either 1D or 2D as the correct way to classify the skill. And again, we might have to ask ourselves here, is there intertrial variability present or is there no intertrial variability? And the answer here is that there's no intertrial variability. In other words, if this individual was to perform the shot put again, most likely the skill is going to look very similar to the way he performed it the first time. Now, something to consider, he may have a different result. In other words, he may have been able to throw the ball further on the second attempt, but the form or the skill itself will relatively remain the same. So with that, we would say that the shot put is a 1D skill. Well, I hope that was helpful, and I hope this gave you a better understanding of how to use Gentile's multidimensional taxonomy.